Welcome to the complete collection of Gary Payton's greatest stories. This series has done extremely well so far and I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who's been supporting the channel and this series over the last two months. We've made a video on Kobe Bryant to start the series, then Larry Bird, then Kevin Garnett, and now welcome to Gary Payton's greatest stories. If you have missed out on any episodes, there is a playlist on the channel and in the description box down below. It does take me a long time to make these videos. Finding all the clips, the highlights and interviews, podcasts and piecing it all up together to make one long video. It does take a lot of effort and a lot of time and I would greatly appreciate it if you could help me out by hitting that like button. If you are new around here and you want to stay up to date with all these videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification button so you never miss an upload of this series. Lastly, let me know which player you'd like me to continue on this series with. Which player should I do next? Without further ado, here's the complete collection of Gary Payton's greatest stories. The Globe! Gary Payton, who is he? People say that I talked a lot. Gary, come on now. Yeah, what's happening? <laughs> if your head lumpy, I'll tell you your head lumpy. Oh, he ain't never seen nothing like this in top. I can get heated up when you want me to. Yeah. He talked more trash to his own teammates did he did. It's dudes like that where, I, you know, that's why things happen off the court between players and their friends and things like that. But it's extremely disrespectful. I've never played against a better, a better competitor. What was your best smack talk? You can't repeat what Ernie, I can't repeat what I used to say. He talked to you the whole time, but he was so competitive. He was great offensively and defensively. And it, it was a privilege and a pleasure to play against the Gloves. Yeah. I used to get on everybody. We used to talk about it with Chuck. Chuck didn't know that I used to talk about their mama, their daddy, <laughs> their sister, their brother. I didn't care. The Glove will talk smack to anybody. We'll talk about your mother. We'll talk about your father. We'll talk about your kids. He's the type that he would talk so much smack that you could never take it personal. It just started being funny. He made an impact on the game even as a rookie. So you kind of had to pestle that Seattle game on the calendar and say, OK. Uh, I know I'm in for a war here. He had those long arms, he was quick, he was fast, he was tenacious, he was just a great competitor. Oh, that's our ball. I mean, he was the type of person who wanted to tell you before the game what he wanted to do. So, um, you know, he was gonna let you know and sometime right there at the jump ball. So he would tell you, I'm gonna beat you down and I'm gonna score 20 points on you and have 10 assists. There's nothing that you're gonna be able to do about it. And he would go out and get 20 and 10 and do a pretty good job of it. Gary Payton lets you know what he's gonna do to you and then backs it up. Yeah. There we go. That's legit. We was in uh, the, 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 everybody's talking about the 20th anniversary of Vince uh, winning the dunk contest in mm -hmm. Oakland, right? Be out four to six weeks, so it's a tough break for Philly once again. Get over there soon enough. Kobe said, "Where is my help?" Firmly guards the basket. You watch his reaction. He throws Gary Payton back, and he says, "Whoa, that's nasty." What y'all don't know is that Kobe Bryant, rest in peace to my dog. Mm -hmm. He took another level of being a defensive standpoint because Gary Payton, after practice, after after practice, All Star practice, pulled us to the side because Kobe asked him some. They pulled both of us to the side. He said, let me tell y'all something. Look, when you're playing defense, and then he went through a 30-minute joint mm, with both of us with defense. I mean, he's, 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 you know, he's one of my favorite players I've ever played with, let alone, you know, when I, the, the all-star game that we had in, um, in Oakland. He helped me become a great defensive player. He told me one thing. He said, Kobe, you got to move your puppies. <laughs> after he told me that, everything everything clicked for me after that, man. I started making all defensive teams. You see right now, he just doing his thing. He gonna make it, he gonna keep making them too. He made first team this year too. That's all he gotta do. Move his puppies because he's very athletic. He know what to do. He know what's happening. And the keeping us between the legs and reaching and how to reach and when you reach up and just little tricks of the trade that next time I saw Kobe after the break, he was using it. Mm -hmm. he came first team that year. First time I seen him, I said, you used that shit, GP show. Yeah, you saw it, you saw it. I got his ass, you saw it. Yeah, yeah, I saw it. Bitch ass nigga. I saw it. I, I caught that shit. You can teach that, bro. But, but I knew that only the three of us was right. part of that, so I was like, you did the rip, you got the rip. Yeah, you saw that shit? I thought he was going to call a fire. He didn't call that shit. 
hands. Wow, because GP taught us when you rip somebody to go through their chest versus using your hand. You see this, right? He told us to take a step and come through your chest and come and then round out. There's no way you can protect the ball. You can't cross it back. Come once you get middle. in there, once I'm in your cab, you can't cross it yeah, up. You would yeah. even have to turn your back. We know we wasn't no texting none of that back then, but when I first saw him, I shot there. It stayed right here when I saw him. He knew exactly what I was talking about. Gary is one that loves to, uh, you know, chit chat. You know, <laughs> <laughs> loves to talk to guys on the court. And he talked a lot of trash. And I was with Dallas when we were playing Seattle and Tacoma. I'll never forget this. Um, we're playing in um, Tacoma. This is uh, I'm in the NBA. And I'm playing for Dallas. Um, I, I'm a rook. Uh, I, I'm a rookie playing against uh, Gary, and, and so we always, you know, looked at each other. Always said hi. Um, but once we got, you know, after the tip ball, we were, you know, going at one another. And I'll never forget. Um, he's posting me up, and I pretty much kind of know what he likes to do. So he went into his move and um, I blocked it. And I said, get it out. And uh, he, see, he said, what? And I told him, get that stuff out of here. But I didn't say stuff, but I, and he, he looked back at me and- uh, And I saw the monster's eyes get big. And he, you know, I said, uh-oh. That was a big mistake. <laughs> McMillan looking to find Perkins on the block. Can't they go outside? Here's Gary for a 15-footer left angle. Nothing but net. Uh, <laughs> he went on like a 15-0 personal run. Hawk out to Gary for the three-stroke. And McLeod running at him. Swish it goes. Gary Payton nails a three. His second three of the night. 15 points for Payton. <laughs> so I went after the game and I said, hey, look, my bad. I had a, I had a, I had a mental block. <laughs> I forgot who I was playing. I didn't mean to say that to you. He said, oh no, you woke me up and that, and that definitely helped me. But I said, don't worry about it, I'll never happen again. I guess best or worst uh, trash talker. GP, I played with GP, I played against GP. He, he just didn't care. And the crazy thing about GP on the court, he was like that off the court. Like, if he saw you in the mall, <laughs> maybe that time I crossed you up, big fella, I gave you that thing, you know, that, and you almost put your arm out of socket. You can't call me, boy, I'm a Hall of Fame. I'm first ballot, boy. I'm first ballot. Gary Payton. Ooh. Gary Payton. Uncle it G. Was, uh, it was seven minutes, seven, eight minutes of a ass whooping he was giving me. See, you gotta know where your man is, even though you're watching the penetrator. Peyton right back at him. Peyton all the way. Technical whistle. It can block shots. Peyton spins away from Arenas. That's well done. Reach of Mike Dunleavy. Three, Peyton, yes. Tie for Murphy. Peyton. The cell leaves it for Gary Street. Yes. It was just one of those things where he had, what, 17? <laughs> all on me in that first five minutes. Like, it was the first <laughs> time in my career, like, the first, and like, especially early career, you know, when you early, you, you dominate high school, college. Shit. No, no, he wasn't saying nothing. That was a problem. <laughs> that was, that was, was a scary. problem, he was, just scoring, he was just scoring. So it was like, soon as I got on the court, like when I when we started, we got the ball, and he did that little smirk. <laughs> <laughs> It threw me head. off already. Like, oh shit! I, like I just picked the ball up. Like I'm not even near the dude. I just picked it up and threw it. Like ah, I guess he already realized. Okay, he done. Like, <laughs> so he I, I didn't scare him, so he need to talk nothing. I got subbed out. I ran off the court so damn fast. <laughs> Woo, <laughs> man! Oh, that motherfucker nice. Like I'm. Like it was one of those things. I was like, I don't, I don't think I want to go in with him. And then he got subbed out, and some, Weber came in. I don't know who he is, but I can say, I, I can go against him. Yeah. Coach, I'm ready. <laughs> he yeah. was one of those. At halftime, like when uh, when I got back in, he was like, "You lucky I ain't the AI type." Of I would have scored fifty against you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you right, you right. I ain't gonna lie. She was, <laughs> you hey, what was, he was. He was posting you up. Everything. Like, it was like drive, like driving, roll, posting. We switch. Up. Yeah, we a switch. He got the big man on him. He posted him up. That's when I knew I was in trouble. Like he got Eric, like Eric Dampier switched on him. He backed, backed him up, spent, faked it. And I'm like, ooh. <laughs> it's not just ooh, me. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, this ain't, this ain't the NBA I'm ready for. Yeah. And when I trash talk, I go in there and I get the mindset. It's gonna be rough for you tonight. 
so you better have your A game. And then I'll put pressure on him. And then he's so startled, he bagging up. He on his heels now. And that mean I'm gonna go on the other end of the offense man, and punish them too. People get tired. It becomes a problem and coaches have to make adjustments. My job is done when all of a sudden you hear that horn say, ah, and they go and sub. He came to the NBA and was loud from rookie year on. Well, Jalen Rose said that he was the most hostile and angry trash talker yeah. he had ever encountered. And he would fight you. <laughs> I understand why he had that level of toughness. But also, a lot of the things that he said would be usually things that you only heard in the alley or in street ball. <laughs> what was like the worst thing you... What was the worst thing Gary Payton said to you in the game? Well, the, the crazy thing is we got along. And so we were playing against them in Europe. I had just got to Indy. This was like 1996. I got traded there in the offseason. And just so happened we were on a European tour and played against Seattle two straight games. This dude out there cussing at me like he ain't never seen me before in life. Like I was just with him. Like, like I was just with him, Vlad, like – Ten hours ago, having drinks. <laughs> this dude, like, you motherfucker. Like, I'm like, okay. It's a strategy. I'm like, got it. He's trying to get you. Got off, it. Trying to get you off your game. Got it. And he's a player, also. Think about it. So he's a he's a future Hall of Famer. The strength of his game is defense and toughness. He talks a lot of trash, and he's willing to fight you. <laughs> right. <laughs> What you going to do with that? What are you going to do? <laughs> He's a hater? He he will get in. It, this is a true. <laughs> but you, you wouldn't know if he really wanted to fight or not. So even like if you snap him, if you if you going back and forth and you're joning with him, He's aggressive then, too. I said, I, yep. posting Isaiah up. Y'all better get help on him. Y'all better get help on him. <laughs> hey, you can't guard me. I was like, who is this kid? We're, we're playing in Seattle, and I catch the basketball, and and all I hear is, all right. I'm, I, I can't repeat what he was saying. But, and I'm holding the basketball, and I'm looking at him. And then I, I had to turn around and like, is, is, he, is he really talking to me? Because he was talking so much trash. Was it shocking? Like, hey, I had to do it. I didn't, I didn't I know him, to. though. Yeah, he didn't even, Isaiah didn't even know who I was. Really? I yeah. No one knew who you were. You were no. just talking? I yeah. stopped for about five seconds. We, the game was going yeah. on. I was dribbling the ball, and he was talking. And I picked up the ball just to, like, look at him. <laughs> He's that cat. I saw Gary Payton control the referees, his coach, my coach, <laughs> the crowd, the lady in the front, the guy who was on the side of the Minnesota game sitting in the bucket. He was controlling the whole mm -hmm. game. It's magical. I watched GP back down the guard from uh, baseline to baseline, talking the whole time. <laughs> Shut your ass up. Bow up, twist. Hey, get his ass in here. Hey, come up. Hey, you see the hand on the hip? Call it if you see. Like, he just <laughs> that sound like it. Finally, him. I'm like, how is GP like managing it. all this? He talking to me. He play. He calling the play. He throwing the ball like yo, and uh, still scoring the ball, stealing the ball, yeah. affected in the in the huddle. He in the huddle. He got the thing. He drawing it up. Yeah. I'm like, yo, GP to me was like masterful. Uh, Gary Payton actually used it to get fouls, mm -hmm. to get his teammates fouls, to uh, get guys in and out. Like he was just, con he was just a control freak, mm -hmm. you know. And if you went to a party with Gary, he was doing the same thing. What a drink set! <laughs> you need an extra? All right. Y'all yeah. ain't drinking. Shots over yeah. here. Hey, see where well, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah, what's that, here, baby? Get them you out of here. Me, man. Who with them? <laughs> Right. I was just like, okay, this is GP. This is just who GP is. Hey, Shaq DZ. What's going on? Kazam. Yes, sir. KG. OBF, man. Original Black Family, baby. All right. All right. Here go my boy, JK. Boy, I don't know what you was doing trying to be. Uh, Dennis Rodman, little brother, but you something else, man. Remember this, Dennis Rodman, little brother? Man, I was kidding, man. I don't know what you're thinking about, but it's my boy, man. What was hey, Gary. <laughs> so, yeah, I saw it. You know, so I guess that would kind of be my example of, if the, yeah, GP was kind of my example of what I wanted to, but I give Gary, shout to GP, man.
Is it true that you once told someone that you're not going to even be in the league next year and then you found out later that you actually hurt his feelings? Yeah, I did. You know what? Lamar Odom was the one that I really went at like that, you know, and then I was talking about his mother and I didn't know his mother had just passed. And I said a lot of bad things to him, and I really regretted that. And he went into the locker room, and he told his agent, and his agent, well, my agent was there, and they talked. And my agent came and got me out of my locker room and said that the kid, the young Lamar was a young kid at the time, and he was, and he was very upset, and he was very emotional. Afterwards, we realized there was more than one Frosty. <laughs> It's dudes like that where, I, where, you know, that's why things happen off the court between players and their friends and things like that. But it's extremely disrespectful. You need, to, you need to watch how he talk to other men. You know, it's a difference between competing and how you talk to another man. Oh, if the glove talks on, you must not respond. Odom talking about Peyton, and there it is, 97-92. And I had to go over there and I had to go and apologize because if I would have knew that his mother had just passed, it wouldn't have never been that way. I said a lot of, Christina, I said a lot of, I said a lot of bad things to a lot of guys. And I heard a lot of guys' feelings. And that was just me. It wasn't personal. It was just something that to get them out of their game. So nothing was off limits? Nothing was off limits. I never, I never said, I, I said anything that I wanted to. I talk about your mother. I talk about your, your father. I talk about your kids. I talk about your, your wives. Kids. Yeah, I'll say anything to get them mad. Who, who are the best trash talkers of your era, Grant? Uh, you know, I think early on when, when you really could, I don't, I don't feel like they trash talk now as much, or they, they're not allowed to. I think the league has cleaned that up. But it, it was definitely Gary Payton. I mean, Gary Payton was, uh, you know, I mean, I just, I remember our point guard when, you know, early on in my career, he, he didn't want to bring the ball up against Gary. <laughs> <laughs> and that's really kind of how I started bringing the ball up and playing point forward. Gary would talk to whoever, talk to refs, players, coaches on other teams, fans. fans. Yeah. He talked nonstop and, uh, and backed it up. So he was the guy that, you know, I think was the ultimate. And I, it was a little personal. He got a little personal at times with folks. But I mean, I think, you know, that's, that's basketball. You're trying, like you say, you're trying to get an advantage. Yeah. You're trying to get over on somebody. And if you if you backed down or you showed that you were scared, oh. then he had you. Ernie, Chuck, and Kenny, I have yeah. a confession. What's yeah. that? Gary made up barbecue chicken, not me. Yeah. Robin Lopez, barbecue chicken. Barbecue chicken down there. <laughs> <laughs> barbecue chicken. Get out! Did you yeah. really? Is this yeah. another story? That's that another barbecue, barbecue chicken. Yeah. Is not Shaq you. gonna give up all our little yeah. secrets? Yeah. And that's your yeah. barbecue chicken. Yeah. Gary always used to look for me. Like Phil always used to say, swing the ball. Gary's like, nope, I'm throwing to Shaq. So every now and then, I like to, you know, show my Akeem Olajuwon and you go to my fadeaway. And Gary be like, no, man, barbecue chicken. Eat his ass like some barbecue chicken. Don't shoot another fadeaway. Don't shoot another fadeaway. So that's a that's a true yes. story. Yeah. It's a true story because oh, yeah. I used to always yeah. tell him. I was like, man, you got barbecue chicken up in there, man. <laughs> <laughs> Go in there and get the ball, man, because, you know, Phil used to always talk yeah. about, Go to Kobe's side. Nah, player, we ain't going to get it back if we go over there, man. Let's go over here. He can double, kick it back out, man, we good. Or we got barbecue chicken in there. So that's how it was. 93-94, we was in the um, conference, uh, Western Conference Finals. You know, they had Charles Barkley, and Kevin Johnson was the man during that time. Yeah. He was the shit, you know what I'm saying? He had averaged like 26 points in the regular season. I didn't do nothing with him in the regular season, but I had made a point that I was going to do something with him this, in, in this, in this, in this uh, Western Conference, and I held him to uh, 14 points, yeah. and I locked him up. And then when I went back to my hotel, my cousin called me on the phone talking about, Glove, glove. <laughs> I was like, man, oh, you got the wrong number. Click. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hung up the phone. So he hit me back. He was like, this your cuz, this your cuz, man. Your name is the glove from now on. I said, why the hell I'm named the glove? He said, because you had Kevin Johnson in your mitt of your hand, just like a baseball and cover it, yeah. just like that. And then ever since then, it was like, I cover people just like a glove, man. I just yeah. all around them, and it starts sticking, and then the NBA got used to it, and then they start bringing out stuff, and then everybody just called call me the glove. That's good. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, I would greatly appreciate it if you guys could help me out by hitting that like button, subscribing if you're new, and comment down below which player you'd like to see next. Lastly, here are two videos that I think you'd enjoy, and thanks for watching.